Welcome back, y'all. Rich Barley here as we venture into episode 4 of the Lone Oak Animal Farm, where we will hopefully sell a lot of eggs, pick some cotton, and see how much grass we can grow to get ready for our cows. <laughs> Well, we're in the beginning of fall, and our cotton's in the ground. It's been fertilized and weeded. So the only things left to do are to make hay and take care of chickens. But with the weather showing rain tomorrow, we're not going to cut the grass today because it won't dry to hay, so we'll take care of chickens. Just like we have been since the last episode. We clean the pen, we feed the pen. Then we clean this pen, and we feed this pen. And then clean this one, feed this one clean another one and feed another one and that's been it pretty much every day for a while and refill the bin take it back and get reset and just as suddenly as the rain showed up in the forecast it looks like it has disappeared from the forecast i guess that's the uncertainty so we're going to go ahead and get mowing because it looks like we've got an opportunity to get this grass dried into hay without having to ted it so we're going to grab our john deere front and back mowers we have plenty of horsepower to run the, the pair. The front, think, I think it needs like 60 horses, and the back is like, oh, I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of like 160. So it's like 220, 240, somewhere in there total. And this, uh, the 6250R has 300. So we'll get all connected up. We'll do some edge dressing, and then eventually let the workers finish mowing the lawn. This will give us an idea about how much hay we can produce just off of field 33 and whether or not we're going to eventually need to buy another field to support a decent number of cattle. Worker's been doing a good job on the back and forth. Having decent headlands helps these guys not get too confused and scared of the roads or whatever and then I'll just finish up this last little part manually and the mowing's done so we'll let this dry hopefully the weather forecast is right this time and we're going to have a couple of days of dry weather so that our wet grass can turn into hay and then we'll windrow it also it looks like cotton's ready to harvest so we've picked up the case harvester the only one in the base game there is one in the cotton DLC, but the John Deere, uh, it's twice as expensive as the case. So we're just going to lease this puppy. We're going to put a worker on it. And the worker will run the harvester, except for where we need to make turns and such. Great thing about harvesting cotton is you don't have to empty out the harvester. So there's no need for a tipper or anything like that. Basically, it fills up, and then the worker will dump a huge brick of cotton in the middle of the field. But there's no need to, you know, come up beside him or any of that. So that leaves the tractor free to plow the field and get it ready to plant our winter barley for next year. This is the feed for our chickens, so it, we need barley to come up once a year to feed all 2,000 chickens. We're going to get our standard shank, grab a weight. And then we'll get everything delivered. And basically, I'll just start following the harvester. And note the color of the grass here. It's uh, a green color. It's a light green color, which means it's semi-dry grass. And it will turn a, yellow, a golden yellow when it's hay. The colors are a little different than the base game, but just so you know. Great thing about the shank is it's just slightly narrower than the harvest, the width of the cotton head on the harvester. So we can literally come right behind him. Oh, we weren't in your way. Get back to work.
So we've done two lanes of headlands as we usually do on this field on this side and then we'll cut him across the bottom. The helper here will finish up two lanes here and then follow behind the harvester. Same thing over here. Do a few lanes of headlands on this side. I usually, typically I'll do three over here, just depending on the width of the header. That little rutted trail on the right, the AI is deathly afraid of it. So if I only do two rows of headlands, he'll end up shorting at each turn, and then you have to go back and clean it up. Just easier to do three lanes and be done with it. The aim here is obviously to, as much as possible, get plowing and harvesting done just about the same time so that we can move into getting the field replanted, getting our cotton sold, because prices are about as high as they're going to get at this, at this time, at least judging by the market menu and seasons. We'll see how many bales we get. I'm getting better at lining up from the inside of the cabin. I really do like first-person view driving when I can. Said getting better, not perfect. And what's this guy doing? Ugh, numb nuts. Plowing into the cotton. Well, he was forcibly removed from the tractor, and we will replace him with a different worker. And we'll get him reset. That's a beautiful picture. Love seeing big machines work. The plow is slowly catching up to the harvester. And what that means is when he gets to the end of the row here, we're going to have to actually stop. Wait for him to get turned around and we'll do the same thing. I don't have any equipment shopping to do while waiting for the harvester, so instead, we'll take some pictures. like the harvest is complete so we've got what about a 20 percent bale stuck in the back of this thing so we got to get that unloaded do it on this side because that's where most of the other bales are would be easier to pick up once we get our bale trailer get that dumped out and we'll get the harvester returned and according to the mt9 that is 3,807 liters of cotton. So I believe we've got 4.2 bales, I guess, of cotton. 
But we'll get a worker on the plow to finish up the field. And since we don't have another tractor right now, we really can't do anything else, so... I'll be glad when, when I can afford another tractor. It's so much more efficient. Okay, so there the plowing is complete. So now we can go ahead and get our bale trailer and send this stuff back. And go fetch the bale trailer. And for the cotton square bales, the trailer holds two bales. So 40,000 liters of cotton. We'll see how much we get. This will give us a good indication. Got a little shortcut through the back of the farm. Across the pond. Right through that opening, and then the spinnery's just off to the right. Well, after we pass the taco stand that's never open, Like I expect to make any money. All right, the the bale trailer works just like a lot of the auto auto ugh, auto loaders. Just hit the reloading mode, bring it over, and drop it. And that was ninety-one thousand dollars. Okay, so we're gonna do that four point two times, or no, two point one times because it's two per trip. So like a hundred and eighty-five thousand ish dollars. And the second time gives us another ninety-one thousand two hundred eighty dollars. Great. So now we just have that one short bale left. Go back through the shortcut. And we got $8,687 for the last bale. So in total, we made $191,249 off of cotton. That's nice. Eggs are still a couple of days away from being sold, but that'll be some more money. Don't know how much. We haven't had the chickens for an entire year, so their crates won't be full. But good news, that's turned into hay. Nice golden color, so we'll be able to windrow it to get it ready to be baled. We're not going to keep the hay. We don't have any animals that need it, and I don't have any place to store it. I mean, other than shoving bales into the barn or whatever. We're just going to sell it. We'll just have an idea how much that Field 33 produces. Yeah, in seasons, in case you're not familiar with it, there's a grass drying model, and it's you know you can't you don't just mow the grass then ted it and then it's hay, like in the in the base game. In seasons, you mow it, you have wet grass. Well, it depends on if it has rained or whatever. It starts out as wet grass, then it becomes grass, and then it's then hay, kind of three stages. And if you cut it and it's below, I think, 20% plant moisture, it comes out as dry grass and you don't have to tet it. You just wait for it to dry and then windrow. And then either bale it or a loading wagon and pick it up. And that's what we've done here is when we mowed, it had not rained. So our it came out as dry grass and we just had to wait a day for it to turn into hay.
And since we've got some excess money, I think we're going to go ahead and repay some of the money we took out for the chickens. We'll repay $55,000. Still have a $700,000 loan. But I did say that we were going to do this as a high credit situation. We're going to lease a bunch of stuff. We're going to borrow as much money as we need. We just don't have a need for that much cash you know, being around, so we might as well pay that back a little bit and keep the payments down. If we need more money later, we can borrow it again. That line of credit keeps growing. The more land we buy, the bigger that line of credit gets. So we got our bailer, and my favorite thing to do is do stuff at night. Night gets really dark. Wouldn't be surprised if, if we have to do this for too much longer if it gets so dark that I actually miss a wind row or leave some stuff out that we'll have to pick up in the morning. I won't make you guys watch the whole bailing operation. You kind of get how it works. We've done it in a previous video and then there is no difference in seasons. It's run over the wind rows and it turns it into hay bales. And we are going to sell all of these. A little extra money. Although, thanks to the bank, we aren't short on cash at all. Well, and a $191,000 cotton harvest. Which, on top of this, we also we'll need to get our barley down, winter barley. But we got 55 bales at 4,000 liters per bale. That's 220,000 liters of hay. So we'll have to see how much cows eat and then we'll have an idea how many cows that field will support. I'm going to get this smaller trailer. It's a little less expensive. We only have 55 bales. No need to bring out the 40 bale Pavelli. And we will get all of these picked up and sold. Should take three trips. 55 bales. Huh. The egg prices are kind of stabilizing. We're right about where the projected peak was about $3,500 per liter or a thousand liters. So we're probably going to sell the eggs and it looks like we sold the cotton at exactly the right time. That was a good price. So let's get our eggs going and again more night stuff. And you can see that it's only like a crate and a quarter because we've only had the chickens for a few months, not a full year. But let's see how much we make in with that. So off of one of the coops for just like half a year and the chickens on it full efficiency, it's almost $12,000. So, not bad. So we should end up with about $48,000, maybe a little less. Not bad for a partial year, and chickens not up to 99% efficiency yet. But that means we should expect no less than a hundred thousand dollars a year off the chicken eggs and once peak efficiency happens it should be well over that and that means that feeding the barley to the chickens should make us more money than if we just sold the barley by itself and certainly more than if we sold the barley and bought feed for the chickens but i think chickens are going to be a good multiplier for the crop value but we won't know until we get a full you know get them fully efficient or healthy and we'll see how long that takes so forty seven thousand five hundred dollars for our chicken eggs and 
Yeah, barley is about six hundred dollars per kiloliter, but we're not going to be selling the barley. I don't think we have we have just enough to feed the chickens. Uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen days till next barley's up. And they need roughly two thousand. So with four pins, that's eight thousand liters. And that's 136,000 liters that we're going to need to cover our chickens until barley harvests again. We've only got 141,000 in the tank. We're not going to be selling much barley. So the price doesn't really matter. And that was a full harvest day, y'all. So we're going to get some shut-eye and see what tomorrow holds. And here we are. Late autumn, day five of the season. We've got to kind of clean this mess up. That's from yesterday's harvest. We got back after midnight, so I didn't come over to clean nothing up. We'll kind of get stuff straightened up here because we do need uh, to do an inventory, figure out what we need to buy because we need to get ready for spring. And done. So, we'll buy some fertilizer, seed, we may be okay, herbicide, we've definitely got to get some. A uh, trip to the store means converting our feed wagon into a baling trailer so that we can transport our shop goods back to the farm. I mean, it's good that once you've bought the 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 feed wagon, so to speak, the tipper, taking the walls off and putting them back on doesn't cost you anything. So going back and forth saves us money. I don't have to lease another trailer. And since we just have the one planted field, we can handle it with a small trailer like this. And by the time we're big enough to have multiple fields, I imagine we will own our own bailing trailer. Back at the farm, a little bit of fertilizer and a whole bunch of herbicide. We'll get this unloaded. Like that. And get rid of the forks. And we need to put down our winter barley. So, back to the horse Pronto 9 DC. We used this one last time. And since we only use a cedar one time a year, again, we're not gonna we're not gonna buy it. We'll lease it. If we ever get into a place where we've got multiple different crops and we're using a cedar or a planter a lot, we'll look into buying one. Especially if I can find a a, a planter that does both grain and the other stuff that we need to plant. Like right now, cotton and fertilizers. For a price we can afford. Right now, we can't. Any of those combo. There's like one I think that does that and it's just too expensive fertilizer and seed are not free I think with leasing costs and everything a typical harvest costs us around fifty thousand dollars so that's the leasing the harvester header the planters and cedars and then paying for seed and fertilizer and everything else. I want to say it's forty to fifty thousand dollars. And here's where I get to correct myself. So we're gonna.
go ahead and lease the Veltra N174 again. Love this little tractor. And I called it my South American friend. Now, while Valtra does have a factory in South America, the N-Series is a European version, and it is only made in their Finnish, the fin in Finland, their Finnish manufacturing facility. So from now on, I will be referring to uh, the blue tractor as our fine Finnish friend. And while we're on the subject of corrections, I believe in the last episode... I incorrectly misstated that 12% is nominal soil moisture for plant growth. Soil moisture, moisture does not positively or negatively impact plant growth. I did some searching through the Realismus, Realismus site to try to find that. I don't know where I got that, where I heard it or read it or something. But when I went to go verify it, because I, was, I wasn't seeing that it mattered, we had several times where soil moisture got below like 9%, down to I think even 6 at one point, and we weren't seeing a mass problem with the field. So after some research last night, I found out that soil moisture, the only thing it does is determine how fast the crops dry and whether or not you're able to harvest or how fast... Uh, hay becomes hay or doesn't right so there is no negative impact of soil moisture on crop either positive or negative actually so we got our fine finished friend and our sprayer the navigator 6000 and it's time to get some fertilizer over the grass field that we just cut we're hoping to get two cuts of grass per year in seasons, you should get one, I believe, early spring and another one either late summer, early fall, if I remember. So we want to get it fertilized so we get as much grass as possible because the next grass is probably going to get fed to cows. Now, a reminder, this field has never been plowed, and it has not been lined. But, my understanding is those things don't matter for grass fields. We'll find out. We'll either get that, that spring cut, or we won't. And our worker has run out of seed. Okay. Well, we have more back at the stock. Little stock area. Get that taken care of. That's one thing to keep in mind later is we probably need to bring a planter and an extra pallet of seed or maybe two pallets of seed out there. Eventually we'll move to bigger plant, uh, bigger cedars that can carry more than 2,000 or was it 2,100 liters of seed? But for now, we just need to make sure that we bring some extra out to the field so that we don't have to go all the way back. Lesson learned. So we've also so now we've applied some herbicide to the grass as well. Again, trying to get the most yield of our for the grass, and we'll just move our fine finished friend over to field 32 so he can, well actually so I can, <laughs> manually put down herbicide on this field. The grass field's looking good. That's two applications. You get one application of fertilizer when you mow, and then of course we did that second one using our Valtra here and then we did it and now this field is planted and it will soon be weeded and it will just need a couple of levels of fertilization and it will be ready to grow just empty this thing out get rid of it Fully planted. It's 
So now that that field's all done, we'll get the Navigator and the Valtra both returned. Or actually, no, we need to keep the Navigator, so we still have a uh, fertilizer to drop down. But we don't need the Vulture anymore. The John Deere can take care of all of our spraying needs. So we'll hitch the John Deere up to the Navigator. And then we'll put it out front and get it ready. We'll wait until we get some growth so for our seeds to germinate so that we can put down the last uh, the next level of fertilizer. And then head back and clean up that mess. Nothing worse than a all cramped up stockyard when you're just trying to get through a harvest in a hurry. day six of autumn and it looks like we got our germination in the field so we're going to take care of our chickens and then do a level of fertilization love guided steering gps just really takes a lot of the work out of work And I do know the values for each of the tools that I use. And if you use guided steering, know that the auto width is typically narrower than the actual working width. And as long as you're going to be paying attention, then setting that width properly will save you on chemicals and time. There we go. And the soil is taking fertilization. You can see it darkening there and on the map. So now we'll set a helper to take care of that. And I want to see if this grass is growing yet. We're at the end of autumn. And no. 0% growth. Again, the moisture doesn't make any difference. I was wrong about that before. But it's a little worrisome because nothing grows in the winter. So we'd better start growing like the first or second day of spring if we're going to get a cut. And I don't, I mean, how's it going to get to 100% in a day? Um, something's, I don't know if it's the fact that it wasn't plowed or limed, even though that supposedly doesn't make a difference for grass. I don't know, if it doesn't come up in the spring, then I may decide to go ahead and plow that, up, plow that over and actually plant grass. See if that makes a difference. I'd rather get both cuts, especially with cows. Uh, to eventually make TMR, we're going to need one cut per year for hay and another cut per year for silage. And with the field fertilized, all that's left is one more level of fertilization and the bar winter barley is done for the year. And all that's left is just chicken groundhog day for the winter. Uh, so unless something else happens in the winter, well, I'll see you guys at the year-end fireside chat. <laughs>